my abs and calves. Is this right? Oliver, your forearms should be trained twice a week, like every other body part, including your calves and abs. Here's a new one for you, for you to try out. It's a supinated, pronated forearm exercise. Full range. Try it, you get forearms like Ricky. To send your letter to Body Shaping and receive this beautiful 8x10 photograph of the Body Shaping... Production in association with ESPN. stop of the Jeep National Championship Series in Big Bear Lake, California. I'm Greg Lewis, along with the mountain bike editor of Bicycling Magazine, Tim Blumenthal. And you know, Tim, uh, we're entering the 10th year of this National Championship Series. 1989, Big Bear Lake was the site of the championship, and uh, a lot of tradition, not only in the sport, but then in this particular location. Well, it's hard to believe sometimes, Greg, that the sport of mountain bike racing goes back a full decade in the United States, and we've actually been through well, you could say almost three generations of champions. We had Joe Murray and Jackie Phelan in the early years, then Ned Overend and Sarah Ballantyne. You, you say this, though, as, uh, as if Ned Overend and Sarah Ballantyne were done. Well, Overend and Ballantyne are still top contenders, but in the last couple of years, John Tomac, Julie Furtado, Ruthie Mathis, we have new names, actually a, a packed, quality field of Americans competing in, in this series this year. At the end of April, the World Cup getting underway in Europe, uh, four events there. Now the Americans have come back, really no Europeans in this field here in Big Bear Lake. Who are you going to say are the favorites at Big Bear based on what happened in Europe already? Well, let's not think first about Europe. Let's talk about what happened in the National Championship Series last year. Ned Overend, I'm not so quick to write him off. He won last year. He came on strong near the end. John Tomac would be another favorite, though. He was terrific near the end of the season. He won the World Cup and then the World Championships. And leads the World Cup uh, right now. Yes, he does. What about Daryl Price, uh, Ned Overend's understudy? A lot of people say this is the year that he may come from under that shadow of Overend. Well, it's possible. He's, he's young, but who better to ride under and to learn from than Ned Overend, Ned Overend as your teammate. And in fact, Daryl Price is accomplished in his own right. He won a World Cup last summer. Maybe this is his year. In the women's field, favorites? Well, again, I'll look to the defending series champion, and that's Chile Furtado. She was absolutely terrific in the early season last year. Maybe Sarah Ballantyne, strong, consistent. What about the course? Demanding? Uh, demanding, yes, because we're at 7,000 feet elevation, and it's also very dry and dusty. And for racers coming from Europe, this is a, a, a new challenge, one that they like, but still they have to get acclimatized. Rivalry is about to be renewed on a demanding course in Big Bear Lake. The National Championship Series is brought to you by Jeep. Introducing the new Jeep Grand Cherokee, totally redesigned from the ground up. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud.
Sports Illustrated catches all their explosive power on the video NBA Dream Team, produced by the NBA. Barkley is free with your paid subscription. Over Robinson, yes. Barkley, Magic, Bird, Malone, Ewing, and Jordan. Now shooting for a common goal. Mullen, and nobody takes you inside like Sports Illustrated. Call to order or renew for this incredible free video. Magic Johnson. Along with 30 issues of Sports Illustrated, including the college and pro football previews, for only $1.39 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. Meet the men who will wake up the world when the dream team becomes a reality on this free video. And enjoy every great moment to come in Sports Illustrated. Call now. Second in this event last year. Allison Cedar of Canada has ridden less than a dozen mountain bike races in her career, but she's the big star of the early season. And this is Tommy Jacques of Boulder, Colorado. She was one of the surprises last year. She finished eighth overall. Six stops in the Jeep National Championship Series. The competitors must count five, including the finals set for Durango, Colorado in August. So we're underway here with Big Bear Lake, California. The course, 6.2 mile loop. The women make four laps, 800 feet of climbing per lap. And another factor, dust. It's very dry here in California, but that doesn't stop Allison Cedar of Canada from going to her strong road rider style start. She burst into the scene last year winning the Chateau Dex World Cup in Switzerland. This year, she's also hoping to do well in the road racing Olympics. But it's Julie Furtado, the defending champion at Big Bear Lake, who sets the early pace on this climb. Climbing not the key part of this race, however, it's the descent. This is a work road, and the object here is to keep a good rhythm and tempo. Tommy Jacques is doing just that in second place. Behind her, Susan DiMatte, but it's Julie Furtado, who is known for her ability to struggle. In fact, the harder the race becomes, the happier she is. Furtado prefers to be in front, where her main opponent is the course. Right there, right there. Tommy Jacques working hard, but her reputation is to be strong at the beginning of a race and then to falter. Will she be different this year? And over the top, Furtado heads into the descent. And this is usually where she shines, because she's very strong and more aggressive than most of her competitors. Tommy Jacques enters the downhill section. It's not that it's so technical, it's that it's fast and daring. And Furtado is thriving. And Susan DiMatte in third place. She's coming off two subpar years, but now back to full health and probably full confidence. Furtado nearing the end of the first of four laps. She goes for the water again, heat and dust. A major problem in this race. Tammy Jack, she looks pretty strong and pretty aggressive near the end of the first lap. For Furtado, it's a hike-a-bike at the bottom portion of the steep section of the second lap. And it's amazing to think that the best riders in the world actually have to get off their bikes here, Tim. Yes, but sometimes it is faster to get off, but what's important is when you get back on to do it smoothly, just like Julie Furtado did. Furtado, gold medal in the off-road world in 1990, and then last year, just fortifying her reputation with seven wins, including this event. This is Sarah Ballantyne. She's now 31 years old. She's always been a gritty competitor who can come from behind late in a race, but today she doesn't seem to be in balance. Fighter, come on, Julie. Julie Furtado, nearing the end of lap two, and no one is challenging her. I think her big battle, Greg, will be to stay hydrated. Tammy Jack still looking smooth and strong, not faltering at all. This race so different than the European World Cup events, where it was mud and slush and rain. And now it's dust and bumpy, rocky downhills. But Furtado, again, in control. This is how she stretches her lead with that powerful descending. Sarah Ballantyne doesn't seem to be on top of her gear. Her cadence is very, very slow. Ballantyne in fourth. This is Susan DiMatteo, who's moved into second. And Tommy Jacques, who's dropped back to third, riding tentatively on the descents and fading on the climb. 
And so Julie Furtado approaches the end of lap three, one full lap to go. In the past, her demons have been flat tires. Today, it'll be that and perhaps staying ahead of the heat. Susan DiMattei trying to close, but Julie Furtado has put such distance ahead of everyone else that it seems that she has got this race under control. And again, it's strange to see the leader of a big bicycle race walking, but at this point, it probably is the most efficient for Julie Furtado. Sarah Ballantyne in fourth with a chance to catch Tammy Jack on this last lap. It's a watershed year for Ballantyne. She doesn't seem to have the same strength at age 31 that she used to. And now, Julie Furtado on her favorite, the descent, and she is untouchable. Susan DiMattei finished third overall in this series last year despite a blood clot. And the year before, she broke her elbow. A lot of tough luck. Bad luck not plaguing her now, though. She's solidly in second place. Tammy Jack looking back over her shoulder. She's in third, but worried about the charging Sarah Ballantyne. And coming to the finish, the first win of the Jeep Norba series for Julie Furtado at Big Bear Lake. She defends the title she took here a year ago and shows that she is still in great form. In most places, when the show ends, the party's over. At Bally's in Las Vegas, when the show's over, the party just begins. Party with our super celebration package. Three days and two nights of food, shows, and more. Just $36.50 per person per night, double occupancy. Call 1-800-634-3434. Bally's, where the celebration never ends. Celebration. Nissan Pathfinder. On a daily basis, it can be cheaper to lease one than to park one. Lease a Pathfinder XEV6, just $10 a day for 36 months. Nissan Sentra. On a daily basis, it can be more expensive to wash one than to lease one. Sentra XE, just $5 a day for 36 months. against time. 23 days of two-wheel torture. The Tour de France, the most challenging bicycle race in the world. A 2,000-mile race that can be won or lost in less than a second. Don't miss a moment of ESPN's unprecedented coverage. Beginning Saturday, July 4th on ESPN. In the race against time, every second counts. champion last year her first win this year in second it's susan d Matei. and now let's go to our peter graves with the winner peter with an excited julie Furtado. julie you just blew it wide open today you must have felt good but yet when i saw you across the finish line you went wow i'm glad it's over you looked exhausted i was exhausted it was a really hard course a hot day lots of climbing and it's just a true test of mountain biking and i enjoyed finishing it <laughs> we're used to seeing down to the wire head-to-head -head battles between Julie Furtado and Sarah Ballantyne, but today Ballantyne can muster only third place. Julie Furtado the win, Susan DiMattei second, then Ballantyne in fourth, Tommy Jacques, who faded, and fifth, Elodie Brown. After one race, Julie Furtado looks comfortable in the Jeep National Championship Series leader's jersey. Here's a man who defines the sport of mountain bike racing. Ned Overend, 36 years old, five national Norba titles. But his field of rivals is thick, including his own teammate, Daryl Price. They're gonna have, they're gonna have that and this is Rishi Graywall, who was very strong near the beginning of last season, looking to do well in California. He won here last year. And if there's a crowd, it must be gathered around, yes, the rainbow jersey, the world champion, John Tomac. Tigre Juarez, he's the hometown favorite. He just moved to Big Bear Lake. The top 30 finishers earn points in this national championship series, and the best five results count towards the overall title. The men's race, five laps, a total of 31 miles. Again, 800 feet of climbing per lap. Will they be able to stay in the saddle where the women had to get off the bike? 
And leading the pack at the start is Rishi Graywall. He's 25 years old. He won here last year, but so far in 1992, he's having a slow start. John Tomac quickly able to capture and take over the lead from Rishi Graywall. Tomac, of course, the world champion. Behind him, it is Daryl Price of Specialized. And then Tinker Juarez, who had a frustrating end to last season, wasn't selected for the world's team. So he's trying to prove himself anew. But John Tomac likes it out front and intends to stay there, setting a torrid pace early on. Daryl Price, though, is keeping Tomac in sight, and that's what he needs to do. He's 22 years old, and he won a World Cup last year, but he rides in the shadow of his teammate, Ned Overend. Of course, Tim Overend's 36, and Price, well, he is bound to take over and not be the protege of Overend, but the successor. As he pursues John Tomac here, Tomac is not able to shake Daryl Price in this race. Tinker Juarez, breathing hard, is about a minute behind as he nears the summit on this course. Juarez, well, he is known for season-long consistency, his ability to perform well on a variety of training. A good climber seems to have bad luck with flat tires, though. Tomac's had bad luck in the past, too, with flat tires, but right now he's hammering. This is John Tomac at his best. Daryl Price, though, yielding nothing. He's got him in his sights. Tinker Juarez on his own in third place, where he finished a year ago at Big Bear Lake. And just behind, Rishi Graywall, followed by Ned Overend. And for Overend to be in fifth place with four full laps to go, that's not a problem. He comes on strong near the end. John Tomac starting the second climb, the number three on his bike. His placing in the Norba series last year, Daryl Price, number four. Tinker Juarez, a big cheer from his hometown crowd, has adopted Big Bear Lake as he starts up on the second lap. And now it looks like Darrell Price has moved up onto the shoulder of John Tomac, and this is a rare sight in U.S. mountain bike racing to see Darrell Price pass John Tomac. Tinker Juarez, though, not in contention with these two. Now Tomac comes back, the great descender. He has taken over from Darrell Price. And the downhill is the defining feature of this course. If Price can stay close to Tomac, he's doing well. Ned Overend, now moving up to fourth place behind Tinker Warren. And Tomac, the downhill racer, in his tuck. It is a bumpy, fast, harrowing downhill. And for Tomac, it's a joy. Tinker Juarez doesn't show nearly the abandon of the two leaders. It's no wonder he's losing time. You'd think he'd do better on his hometown training course. Daryl Price, despite Tomac's skills on the descents, has not been shaken. As they begin lap number three, Tomac finds himself in unfamiliar territory. The World Cup races he won, he won by several minutes, but now he has a man on his shadow and hard on it. Tinker Juarez in third, but well behind the leaders, trying to hold off Ned Overend, who's making an attack from fourth. And the steepness of the hike-a-bike section shows as the two leaders carry their bikes. Daryl Price is a little bit peppier. He's had a couple weeks off after getting hurt and coming home to rest. Tomac, well, he's been plagued by media appearances and sponsorship demands, but he still believes in himself. My form is good. I don't think that's, you know, a question, but, you know, there's a lot of variables in racing, so uh, I'm confident that I can do well, but I won't predict a win. <laughs> In Big Bear Lake, this is the variable. Daryl Price, John Tomac fading on the climb. Price goes past him, and look at him now as he makes a wild descent to hold off Tomac, whom he knows is a descender supreme. Can Daryl Price stay out front? Stay with us for a drill to get the explosion back through the ball. 
Okay, on the left. That's it. Smile. They're all related now. I know it's scary. Aren't you glad you used dial? Hold it. No, no, don't go anywhere. Don't you wish everybody did? Take the picture. The idea of a high finish has done a lot to slow down golf swings. In an effort to finish high, the club often makes a wide but slow arc. There's no explosion through the ball. The cure for this slow motion type finish is to concentrate on letting your arms fold quickly after the impact. Let the shaft hit your left shoulder and go down your back. Hold this thought. Finish low to make it go farther. The Golfer's Edge, brought to you by Dial Soap. Three minutes back in the descent of the third lap, Tinker Warren. And he's not quite as aggressive as the others. His arms don't seem relaxed, and his line is not nearly so straight. Darrell Price, though, riding with good form as he starts the ascent to begin the fourth lap. Can he hold off John Tomac? Tomac now, 20 seconds behind with two laps to go. That's just 12 miles, and for John Tomac, 20 seconds is nothing. But usually at this point in a race, he's either winning or he's out of it. He's not out of it now, but Daryl Price being urged on and encouraged by the crowd, Tinker Juarez, it's his hometown crowd, but he looks so tentative, and he's dropped further back. Now more than three minutes behind the leaders. Ned Overend, the five-time national champion, is struggling. He's in sixth place. And Rishi Graywall, one foot down. This is not his normal form. He won here last year, but this year he's having trouble. It's a bit harder for me to stay healthy in Europe because I'm used to a drier climate, and I get over there, and, and all of a sudden the climate's really moist and damp, and uh, it's, it's hard on my lungs. My lungs get uh, infected quite easy in those kind of conditions. At over 7,000 feet elevation, Graywall in trouble here at Big Bear Lake. But Daryl Price thriving on the altitude as he pushes up the hill, extending his lead over John Tomac to now 1 minute and 12 seconds. Tomac had dominated the descents, but now it's the uphills that are giving him trouble. So critical in this race, as Peter Graves explains. Thanks very much, Greg. High in the mountains here of Southern California, this is what the riders call technical single track. And there's a lot of it here at Snow Summit. A good cross-country course is a blend of uphill, downhill, and flats. But if the riders are going to win, if they're going to go for gold in this competition, they've got to do it right here on the technical single track. It's the heart and soul of the course. Darrell Price is well aware of his time advantage, and he's sailing towards maybe his first victory of the year. Tinker Juarez, the opposite of sailing. He's dropped another 40 seconds to 340 behind Price on this one climb. And that's Ranjit Graywall. He's moved up into fourth place. He finished fifth here last year. Tomac still exuberant, still having fun. But today, fun isn't fast. Here's Darrell Price. He has extended his lead on the descent to 132. And behind Ned Over and the five-time national champion. What a career. The first world champion of our sport. Five times the national champion. And one of those came here at Big Bear. Over end at 36, though, maybe seeing his career begin to fade. Daryl Price still out in front of John Tomac. You know, Tomac looks so quick, but it is deceiving. He is not quicker than Daryl Price today. After four hard races in Europe, he may have what they call heavy legs in bike racing. Chico Juarez, again, we see his bike squirming and squirreling as he comes downhill. He looks like he's going to crash, Craig. Daryl Price, he looks like he's going to win. No fatigue showing in his form here as he comes to the summit. And it's downhill for Daryl Price as John Tomac still is climbing. He'll always thrill the crowd, even in second place. Second place is getting further back, though. Daryl Price on his way to his first win since Mount St. Anne last year. Now 2.59 in front of the fading John Tomac. And this is victory lap time, relaxed and free, while John Tomac, he knows his fate. Second place. Now he just needs to hold on. He's probably very hot and very tired. And lucky that it's Tinker Juarez behind him in third because someone else might be able to catch Tomac now. The course is almost like a roller coaster here with the big banks. For a recreational rider, this would be a lot of fun. And actually it is for the leader, Darrell Price. John Tomac trying to make up as much time as he can on the descent. 
He was second in the World Championship downhill. It is one of his best aspects in racing, but he does not have the distance to do it here to try to catch Daryl Price and Tinker Juarez. We see the pain in his face as he comes over the top for the final time. He doesn't look strong. He's four minutes and 33 seconds behind, but he's still in third place. Tomac in cruise mode. Just riding it out now, hoping to keep second place and get the National Championship Series points. Tinker Juarez tries to hang it out on the descent, but this is where he has had troubles throughout the entire race. And the smoother Tomac, though he's fatigued, will not be caught. He's so light, and here that's a disadvantage. A little pirouette for Daryl Price as he comes out of the shadow of his teammate, Ned Overend. They call Price Overend's protege. With this win, he may be Overend's successor. It's Price all the way. Switzerland on, on Monday and I had a lot of meetings, business meetings and travel and things like that and uh, a lot of times, you know, you can't be on your best form at every race. So, And, you know, I really, you know, didn't feel good at all and I still came out with a second so I'm a little bit happy about that. I was just, you know, just plugging away out there trying to get it done. The top five finishers atop the podium. Number one in the Jeep Championship jersey is Daryl Price. He indefinitely has come out from under the shadow of Ned Overend. The series continues uh, in early June in the Catskills at Hunter Mountain, New York, and the uh, first time the tour has gone there. It's a ski area. Yeah. Eastern skiers will know it well as a rocky, steep mountain, and I think it'll probably be a true test of mountain biking. Very different, though, than the dust and high altitude. An exciting season in the Jeep National Championship Series is underway. Mountain biking returns to ESPN on July 1st with the Mountain Bike World Cup from Hunter Mountain, New York. The first North American stop on the Mountain Bike World Cup this year. Hunter Mountain, coming your way on July 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on ESPN. Then be sure to catch the action from the very technical course at Mount Snow, Vermont. The next American stop on the Mountain Bike World Cup. That comes your way on August 5th at 5 p.m. 
Also, be sure to watch Bicycling as the series presents a comprehensive preview of the Tour de France, including interviews with the favorites, a look at the course, and a discussion of the winning equipment. Catch Bicycling on June 27th at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific. seldom see one throw it across the plate. They make a guy on a no two count fish after a bad ball. That's an advantage Mike Davis has at times is that when they're expecting him to follow a move with a standard move, he follows it with an off the wall move and it really catches you off guard. The element of surprise in Mike Davis's court as he looks to the light, to the ceiling, points at him, starts talking to them. But see right here, see right there when he turns his back and Phil Irwin was really on his toes, he'd go over and roll him up. That's what I'd be doing. Collar of our lockup center of the ring. But first, we're going to go to a break. We'll be back with more action right after this. Your car doesn't look, doesn't feel, doesn't smell brand new anymore. The thrill is gone. Get it back with new vinyl. New Vinyl Conditions restores and protects vinyl and leather. There's no rubbing, no buffing. New Vinyl penetrates and dries in seconds. You get a protective finish and a showroom feel that's so real you can smell it. Just like a brand new car. But all that was easy. Watch New Vinyl make the seat of this junkyard car look like new. Now it's softer, more supple. Even gives these tires a showroom shine. So whether your car is really old or just feeling old, New Vinyl will bring it back fast. There's only one New Vinyl. It's guaranteed. Want it back? That new car feeling? It's yours with New Vinyl. There's only one New Vinyl available at Sears, Pep Boys, Rite Aid, True Value, Ace, Western Auto, Eckerd, Walgreens, Kmart, and other leading stores. Excuse me, nothing in America is free. Love this. This summer, Damon yes! and Marlon Wayans All right. want to give you Mo. Oh, you absolutely right, Mr. Man. Everybody needs to know that. Mo fun. You heard me. Mo romance. Can I get down on one knee? <laughs> Mo excitement. You certainly have personality. Mo money. Rated R. Starts July 24th at theaters everywhere. ESPN presents Practical Jokes on the Pros, a home video featuring sports stars that you'll watch over and over again. It's hilarious. Fans, I'm David Webb. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. You're going to watch me kick a cowboy. I'm going to get it for you, Johnny, because I'm not nuts. I'm not crazy. I'm going to kill Bill Irwin. I'm going to beat him up bad. Maniac Mike Davis, Wild Bill Irwin in the ring. Fans, we're about out of time. Here on Supercard ESPN Wrestling, Johnny Mantell right along ringside with me. Oh, I'll tell you what, if that was me, man, let me tell you all something out there. Wild Bill, you better be careful. I'm not jumping up there today, but you see what's with me at ringside. It's always with me. And like my brain, it carries a big wallet, buddy. And Bill Irwin, you remember something. We may not be fighting today or doing anything today, and you may have this guy in the ring you can't whoop, but someday, face to face, we'll meet, and you're mine. Join us next time here on Supercard Wrestling.
Bicycling Magazine, Tim Blumenthal. Welcome to the fifth stop on the World Cup of Mountain Bike Racing from Hunter Mountain, New York, the first American stop this year. Although, Tim, the conditions are really very reminiscent of Europe. Well, Greg, we've had three and a half inches of rain here in the last 24 hours, and that probably suits Thomas Frischknecht of Switzerland, the cyclocross specialist, very well. He won two of the four stops in Europe. The other two were won by the American John Tomac. He probably doesn't mind these conditions either. On the women's side, while well, it's no longer an all-American show, the Europeans have really come on strong. So I look for a fairly even battle between five or six racers. John, of course, can ride for uh, Nike, Raleigh, and Tioga. He's got a multiple sponsorship. He was a national BMX champion. He's now been a national road champion. The Mountain Bike World Cup is brought to you by GT Bicycles, innovation that works. And by Fuji Bicycles, precision, performance, pride. There's no feeling like a Fuji. to riding faster and farther with this free book, Bicycling's Fitness Training Manual. The tips in this 52-page guide will help you boost your speed, build stamina, and have more fun in your bike. Tips like the single best way to increase your speed, how to build endurance, 25 tips to improve your riding. The book is yours free just for trying Bicycling, the world's number one cycling magazine. Every issue of Bicycling gives you expert tips to help you ride better, train smarter, and feel stronger. Plus, our annual buyer's guide gives you the inside scoop on the year's hottest new bikes. Call 1-800-227-7200 to get seven issues of bicycling and a free training manual with your paid subscription. Take a ride with bicycling. Order your free training manual and no-risk trial subscription now. Now a look at the women's favorites. This is Ruthie Mathis, the defending world champion of mountain bike racing. And, of course, an old rival, the World Cup champion, Sarah Ballantyne. Big Red, they call her. Julie Furtado, she won the Norba Championship. Three American women against a tough European field. Here's Eva Orvasova of Czechoslovakia, a former road racer, along with Sylvia First, age 30, from Switzerland. And this young woman, Chantal Dacourt, we've not seen much from this year. Another Swiss. But the overall leader in the World Cup Series, Susie Buchwieser of Germany, is not here at Hunter Mountain. The standings show the international flavor of women's mountain bike racing. The two Americans are down low, third and fourth overall. The women's race underway, three laps, 21 miles total, 1,000 feet of climbing per lap, and a third of the course is single track as they shoot out to try to take an early lead. And you can see right now the mud, the slime, the horrid conditions that this racing will be run in. Actually, the women were scheduled for four laps. It was cut back one, just as the men have been cut back from five to four. And adding to the challenge, temperatures in the low 80s and on the way up, plus it's humid. It's going to be a rough day. The world champion, Ruthie Mathis, sets the early pace. Chantal Dacour right beside her. Mathis off her bike, and she has said that her strengths really are her fitness and not her technical skills. Here's Dacour of Switzerland, and she is even pushing up now. This course, the single track and the conditions, have made for a lot of pushing, it appears. Well, this is the first lap, Greg, early on the first lap. Reigning European and Swiss champion was third in the preceding World Cup in Kloster, Switzerland. She is on her way up, literally. And now, on her way down, Chantal Dacour, and again, the conditions so demanding. And Chantal Dacour, one foot out of the pedals. It shows how tough the conditions are. That Sylvia First, Julie Furtado, Ruthie Mathis, Susan DiMattei, Eva Orsova, and Tommy Jock behind, all bunched very close. And Chantal Dacour still dominating this race course. 
as we conclude lap one. And behind her, you cannot tell it's the rainbow jersey. It is a mud splattered Ruthie Mathis. This is a fine descender, if she can see. And last year, she surprised the world by winning the world championship in Italy on a very tough course, a climbing course. It's a little bit different conditions here today at Hunter Mountain. Julie Furtado, 51 seconds back. And you can see the concentration that is her trademark. And you can also see how her back wheel is slipping in these abysmal conditions. You have to have a light touch on the handlebar. The car back on her way up off the bike and now back on in the most the most impossible of conditions 46 seconds behind the chase group led by Julie Furtado looking for her first World Cup win she's wearing the Jeep National Championship jersey in a series that's being held concurrently with the World Cup Ruthie Mathis not able to make the climb on her bike these two are old rivals Furtado the 90 World Championships gold medalist as we now look at Dakar and Mathis from 1990 in the World Championships was the bronze medalist. And here on the second lap in second place for Tato, she much prefers the dry, dusty courses of the West. That's where she won the World Championship, the inaugural World Championship back in 1990. For Tato, known as a risk taker, 30 seconds behind.